All right. I have broken things down into five basic organ segments. I know there are a lot of them. I, I told you three years I've been working on this. Okay, but I also uh, put some icons in so that you can see some basic facts about every case. So 37 of the 50 cases we will look at have our motor vehicle collisions, and that will be designated with that uh, green triangle. The other causes, well, we have the typical uh, guns and knives. Actually, that's not a knife, it's a screwdriver. Uh, we have a soccer mishap, and then we've got a bull, a horse, a doctor, and a woman. So those are the potential uh, the sources of these traumas. I also went to the National Center for Biometric Information and pulled the expected mortalities for every one of these injuries. So you'll see that with each one. And then uh, whether or not the patient lived is certainly an item of interest. So a deceased patient will be designated with that ghoulish skull icon. And then whether the radiologist actually made the call or not, did they see the finding? That'll be a, a red X if the radiologist missed the finding like Miss Othmar used to put on your grade school tests. So what this ends up is we have iconized all these things for every one of these uh, entities, and you'll see those at the bottom of the screen. So if you ever think, hey, did this guy make it? You just look to the bottom and you'll be able to see the icon. All right, this is an interesting one. A gastric defect, you've got lots of intraperitoneal gas. And of course the rule is the more gas you see, the more proximal the rupture of the GI tract must be. And there's the actual defect in the anterior wall of the stomach. And it's rare you get such a treat as to see that. And the reason you can see it here, this NG tube passes through that defect and is free in the peritoneum. And it's probably stenting open the tear in the stomach. I really noticed with uh, gastric ruptures, especially probably because the rest of the intestines are all bathed in hydrochloric acid, they tend to get very thick walled. So that's just a, a little phenomenon I've noticed in association with gastric ruptures. Watch that NG tube. It goes out the anterior wall and is just loose in the peritoneum. Incredible. And then we follow it back up and you'll see the tip right there. All right, this is a duodenal rupture. Actually, at the ACR uh, meeting, it was funny, one of their lecturers uh, said duodenal. And I thought, oh, I may be in love. <laughs> I've been a fan of that for years, right? Uh, it's the duodenum, and it's the umbilicus. And here is my defense for this phrasing or this pronunciation. If you put the emphasis on the third syllable of a four-syllable word, you sound ridiculous. <laughs> All right, so this is a, a duodenal rupture and it's that posterior wall right near the uh, uh, meeting of the second and third portions of the duodenum. You can see there it's the uh, duodenal defect in that there's just no posterior wall to it whatsoever. The gas collections with these can be kind of subtle, right? but they are definitely retroperitoneal. And so there is the duodenal defect. And then the gas collection right adjacent to it and really contained there in the retroperitoneum. So we've got the coronals on this, and there you can really see that defect, right? It's in the posterior inferior wall of the duodenum, and there is the gas. So this patient did fine. That was just a car wreck, probably a seatbelt injury. Hmm. There we go. My battery might have died here. Oh. All right, this one is a duodenal hematoma, and this one is really interesting. If you didn't know this was trauma, 
you might actually think, what is going on here? It's an enormous, relatively hypodense collection. It's a little variegated. Hey, thanks. Right, and it's basically, it's a mural hematoma that's bound by the serosa of the gut. And I believe the, the duodenal lumen is actually displaced medially there, uh, probably is sitting somewhere around in here. Hey, here we go. The thing that's impressive about this one, though, is the size. It just goes on and on. So this was a soccer injury. It actually wasn't a soccer ball. This patient hit the ground and was kicked in the epigastric region. And that's what resulted in this. But look at the size of that on the coronals. You can really see how far inferiorly this extends. It's pretty impressive. To, and thinking about the gut serosa and how stretched it must be, it's pretty impressive. Right, so that was a duodenal hematoma. All right, we'll do this one and take a quick break. This is a pretty incredible case. This uh, patient basically just whipsawed uh, in a car wreck and tore the anterior abdominal musculature. Right, so if you're looking at this, what is missing? The rectus abdominis is completely missing. And then in addition, don't be distracted because there's a filling defect in the IVC consistent with a laceration. And then one cut lower, there again, the absent abdominal musculature, but look at the aorta, that's actually not a perfect circle. And so it is lacerated as well. And you can see there's quite a bit of retroperitoneal perivascular stranding there, right? So watch those rectus muscles, there they are, and there they're not. And then you pick them back up right there. Incredible. And so there's the IVC filling defect, and there is the abnormal contour to the aorta. And you can see that aortic pseudoaneurysm very nicely here. So no rectus abdominis muscles here. And then look at that that aorta is definitely transected and there's a large pseudoaneurysm there. Couldn't get a good view of the IVC on the sagittals here. Uh, and ultimately, this patient incredibly survived. They stented the aorta, they didn't touch the IVC, and they sewed his rectus muscles back together. Here we go. Uh, I love this one just because of the tale that I get to tell. So this was one of my cases. Uh, you can see there is a tiny dot of extraluminal gas here, free in the peritoneum, suggesting there has been a, uh, an intestinal rupture. You go down lower, you can't actually see the rupture, but look at the thickening, the hyperdense thickening, for that matter, of this loop of small bowel. So the thing that was funny, I've got a question mark there for the actual cause because I was not able to discern. I called this in and I said, this looks like a hemorrhagic contusion of the small bowel with a small perforation. The clinical history read, fell from board. And I said, what is that? Fell from board, was she walking on an elevated board? Was it a diving board? Was she forced to walk a plank? I said, can you give me some clarity? Because I knew at the time, this is a great case, right? This is a hemorrhagic small bowel contusion with a perforation. I'm gonna be using this and I wanna tell people what actually happened. The ER guy says, I haven't talked to this lady. I, I have no idea. And I said, well, can you find out? And he said, well, can't you just say a board was involved? A board was involved. <laughs> All right, uh, this was a great case. And again, that theme of aortic injuries so frequently being associated with other injuries. So this is an irregular aorta right near the isthmus, right? That is an aortic laceration. And there's actually, you can see the linear filling defect there, not a lot of stranding, but there is actually a lot of intramural hematoma uh, surrounding the descending thoracic aorta. 
But then, oh, sorry, first we have this. You can see that little uh, pseudo aneurysm there on the undersurface of the aorta, a lot like other ones we've seen. And that wall thickening, it's probably an intramural hematoma descending down the descending aorta. But here in the abdomen, a lot of fluid density in the peritoneum itself and these two small foci of extravasation or pseudoaneurysm formation uh, sitting there in the abdomen. But the other thing that's impressive is there's ileal pneumatosis. There's just a little bit of gas in the wall of the terminal ileum. So this actually, the aortic laceration was called, the bleeding, the mesenteric hemorrhage was called in those small pseudoaneurysms, but we did not call the ileal pneumatosis. And there on the cine, you can really see it. It's, uh, it's pretty pronounced. And so the surgeon was furious. I got an earful on this one. Uh, and I, I even, he said, I would have gone to the abdomen much faster if I'd known that that bowel was necrotic. He said it was terrible, purple, dusky when we got in there and ultimately had to be partially resected. And he blamed that on us because we did not call the pneumatosis in the terminal ileum. And I said, really? Extensive hemorrhage and pseudoaneurysms of the mesenteric vessels wasn't enough to get you down there fast enough? But apparently it wasn't. Uh, the other thing that was funny about this, uh, Michael Rodriguez from Synergy, he was watching me present this case one time and he came up to me afterwards and he said, you know, sometimes the bowel shears and you just get gas in the wall. And I said, Woo, you know, that's definitely, that definitely can happen. So I went back and I called the pathology department and said, hey, do you still have that length of bowel? And can you take a look and tell me if you think it was ischemic or torn? And he was, he was a team player. He went in and he took a second look and he called me back a couple of days later and he said, no, I can't tell. So, <laughs> so I guess we don't know. But there is the sagittal on the aorta. All right, this one is a colonic contusion. I like the subtlety here. You can see there is just a little pericolonic fluid density there, and there is some wall thickening that you can appreciate uh, on the cine. The reason I put this in is because it's associated with a chance fracture. And this was one of those things that I just heard all the time. Chance fractures are associated with visceral injury, splanchnic nerve, palsies, and all kinds of other things. And I really hadn't seen that very often, right? But this is a nice example. This is actually a unilateral chance fracture. So you've got a vertebral compression fracture and a horizontally oriented uh, fracture coming out through the, one of the pedicles. And so that is a pretty severe flexion injury, and that tends to uh, be associated again with visceral injuries. So there's, the, watch that left colon, look at all that fluid around it, and you can really see you lose that relatively decompressed colon in all that hemorrhage. So that's a colonic contusion. They didn't ultimately have to do anything with it but that's a relatively subtle call, and certainly your attention would be called to it uh, by the presence of that chance fracture. Right? You're gonna to have to do a much more in-depth uh, evaluation of the viscera. And here is the sagittal on that chance fracture. See, it doesn't go through the pedicle on one side, but it does on the other. All right, well, this is a very curious case. We're gonna be looking at some bladder ruptures later, intraperitoneal and extraperitoneal, but I've never seen one on this particular aspect of the bladder. So you can definitely see there is a dot of gas within the bladder itself telling you that there is a problem. And there is perirectal gas here, low in the perineum. There's a nice collection of density there dependent in the bladder that's almost certainly clot. But look at this. This is actually a retrograde cystogram. And you can see there is a defect in the posterior bladder that ultimately is working its way into the rectal lumen. Incredible. 
So this, bizarrely, is a rectal perforation with an associated uh, extraperitoneal, technically extraperitoneal bladder rupture. And this was a prison assault. So uh, I made this one bounce. It's pretty impressive, but isn't that incredible that they did a retrograde cystogram and that contrast made its way into the rectal lumen. So there's the gas, the clot in the bladder. And let me go to the contrasted one. So here's the cystogram and there's the posterior bladder defect. And then there you can see it going into the rectum and then we'll bounce and come back up. And you can really appreciate that's how the rectal lumen filled with contrast. Oh, the state of our prisons. All right, and if you thought that one was crazy, this, uh, so this actually had a clinical history that would have made Hemingway jealous, envious. It said, rolled, ejected, crushed. So this patient went off the road, not, not restrained, rolled his truck, was ejected from the truck, which then landed on him. So, Right here is where all the action is. There is a double loop of small bowel that is going to enter the rectal lumen. And immediately adjacent to that is that little dot of gas that you can see is actually extra intestinal, right? Right, right where those two are meeting, right? So there's the gas and there is that little, it's a doubled loop of small bowel. And so on the cine, you'll be able to appreciate this. Ultimately, what you'll see happens is that loop of small bowel goes out through the patient's anus and is hanging out between his buttocks there. So right there is the gas and you will see that loop of small bowel enter the rectal lumen, there it goes, and then I'm out the anus. So uh, they actually saved a surprising amount of the small bowel uh, in this. They they did have to resect a little bit. It was pretty beat up, the surgeon said. But he said, you know, we got to, we shoved a lot of it back in. 